Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And yeah, just welcome to this video. What I want to do is explain about the naming of comets. And do you get to assign your name? Like if you discover a comet, can you name it after yourself? Well, let's have a look basically. So as an astrophysicist, I have been involved in the discovery of exoplanets. And well, okay, I haven't been involved in comets. That's a bit smaller, to be honest, there in the solar system. I've been involved with the exoplanets. And unfortunately, you don't get to assign your name to an exoplanet if you discover it. I know it sounds really boring. They get boring scientific names due to some, um, like, classification, not classification, but the, there's a system involved that gives them, like, a code, a kind of name. And it's quite logical. Makes sense, I suppose. You can't just assign your name randomly, which probably sounds a bit boring. I know everyone's thinking, oh, if you discover something, you get to give it your name. Well, in exoplanet science, not so much. Comets, well, comets are a bit different. So let's kind of go through that. Really. Now, these are some planets that I've kind of I've been involved with. They have boring names. You don't want a boring name. So if you want to name an object, stay away from exoplanets. You're not going to get your name associated there. But what we're going to do is we're going to then have a look at comets. Now, these are some names of some comets. They have they use a I say similar system. So there is some logical way in which they get a name, but they also get an actual name as well. Does that make any sense? Yeah, so you'll see there's like a code at the beginning, the front part of their name, and then there's something like Atlas, Pan Stars at the other end. So there's two parts to this, a bit different than exoplanets. So what we're going to do, let's go through that system, explain how they actually get their name, and what it means for you if you actually detect or discover a new comet. Okay, so as well as having that name Atlas Pan Star, which actually is down to the the team, the mission or the telescope, I suppose, that's kind of detected them. You can also put your name to it. So this guy here, Lovejoy, has detected quite a few, not detected, but he's discovered a few comets. His name's there. So that is exciting. It means that if you can go out and, and discover one, you could have a comet named after you. So we're going to go through this and find out how it's going to get named. So in 1994, the International Astronomical Union approved this particular current system to name comets. They have the same for like minor planets, asteroids, that sort of thing as well. We're going to focus on the comets here. So you've got that, it looks like a bit of a code, really. You've got like C2022, E3. Now, there's a logical system for that and how they actually pick up the name. You don't get to decide that it's not randomly generated. It comes about due to when it was discovered and things like that. So the very first part of that name is the type of comet that it is. So here we've got C. That kind of just means comet, I suppose. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through and just explain what they are. So you've got P here. So the P is referring to short period comets. These have orbital periods less than 200 years. So they're classified as a periodic comet. And the reason why they're classified as a periodic comet is that they've had multiple passages. We've seen them come into the inner solar system multiple times. So we know they're periodic. They're not just coming in for once. So they have, I mean, 200 years is not a short orbital period, but um, with regards to comets, it is. So these have been confirmed multiple times at perihelion passage, basically when they come into their closest to the sun. And you've got an example here. So Haley, this 1P Haley has approximately 75 year orbital period. That's a short period comet. The C here is a non-periodic non comet. So it's a comet. And these have got orbital periods that are hundreds to up to millions of years. And they would typically have only ever been observed once. And they've likely probably come from the Oort cloud. They've come a bit further out. So they've traveled further. It takes a lot longer for them to go all the way around. We've only uh, observed these once. So they're not classified as periodic because we haven't seen them do multiple passages. So that's what that refers to. Your X, these don't have reliable orbits. We don't really know what their orbits are doing. And most of the time, these could be historical comets that were discovered a long time ago before, com well, not before comets, before telescopes. 
or there just wasn't enough observations, or they could have bro broken up. And if they're broken up, we can't get a reliable orbit. So some examples here, you've got like the great comet of 1106. Again, that was kind of before telescopes, before we were able to do very accurate orbit of these comets. So no reliable orbit there. Um, this particular one disintegrated before it headed back out to the outer solar system. But smaller parts of that now kind of return as sun grazing fragments. That means that comets are passing very close to the sun. They basically graze, almost graze the atmosphere of the sun. And they're classified as sun grazing comets. And parts of that comet that disintegrated are now parts of that group, I suppose. So. Anyway, so now we've got um, D. These are going to be periodic comets that are broken up. So here you've got Shoemaker Levy 9, and it got it broke up into lots of pieces and actually impacted Jupiter. That's an image I think is it just as it um, was about to hit Jupiter, I should say. So periodic comets that have then broken up, actually declassification. And A, now these are actually asteroids or minor planets, but they were originally mistaken for comets. So they'll take the A, the A classification there. And they, or they could be asteroids that have more comet-like orbits. So they have more elliptical orbits instead of being more asteroid-like, which are a bit more circular. So comets, they have very elliptical orbits. Asteroids, not so much. So these were probably just mistaken for comets. They're not actually comets. And then you've got I. I is referring to interstellar comets. We don't have many of these. There's only actually a, literally a handful of these, two of which are here. You've got Borisov, um, Oumuamua. These came from outside of our solar system. They were interstellar comets, came through and then back out again. So they'll take the I classification for their name at the very beginning. So that's what that first letter is at the very beginning of their name. Um, the next part, fairly straightforward. That series of numbers there that four number sequence is the year of discovery so this one here c2022 e3 was discovered in 2023 that's it fairly straightforward easy to understand the next part is the half month that it was actually detected so if it's an e that means it's the first half of march now to give you an idea of what all the letters are if you go on to the international astronomical union website it gives you what letter it would be so if it was discovered between the 1st of january and the 15th of january it will take a if it's in the second half of january it'll be b and then you just go through basically and you get all the letters there essentially so depending on when, when it was discovered in that particular year it takes a letter now the very last one is then the number comet that it was discovered in that half month so this one here is three so that would be the third comet discovered in was it the first half of march i think this one was so the third comet discovered in the first half of march 2022 and that's how it gets its name but it doesn't stop there you then have another part at the end in brackets now that can be named after well, they, they get a name, basically, and it could be named after the discoverer, but it very often is. So here, again, you've got Lovejoy. That is the person who discovered that particular comet. So again, if you've detected and discovered a comet, you could have your name associated with that, which is quite exciting, actually. By the way, I don't have anything named after me. So Now, it could also be, now, because this was a, a single person that discovered it, it will take a single person's name. But like Shoemaker, Shoemaker Levy was two people, I believe. So it can take two people's names or it can take a discovery team. So if it's a professional group of astronomers, it could take that name instead, like Atlas or Panstars, which might be the telescope, the mission that, that discovered it. But plenty of amateur astronomers have the actual name associated with it. So what I would say is, go and get your telescope out and go start looking for them. And this is unlike an exoplanet. So if you saw my other video on exoplanets, you don't get to give your name to an exoplanet and it will be named after the telescope name or the instrument that detected it or even the catalog or the star it was orbiting. It never takes the name of the discoverer, unfortunately, which is a little bit boring. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy the videos, find them helpful, then do consider becoming a member. I've got lots of extra videos in the member section 
there's other benefits and it also helps generally support the channel so I can keep making these videos. So thank you for watching.